Well, I have good news and bad news. Good news is it's 48 inside, 38 out. Bad news is it's almost 10 o'clock. It's 9.40 in the morning. I um, experimented last night with the wood stove. I kept it running all night. Um, well, I didn't do anything. I stayed up until midnight. I stuffed the thing with two large logs. Well, for this stove, large logs. And I had the stove running. And um, it was 58 degrees in here. I got up at 2 o'clock and checked the wood stove, and it was still full. I got up again at 4. I did not go outside, and I checked my thermometer in my bedroom and uh, it was 58 which was good and the porch was 56 and it was 30 um, what was it it was 30 something outside so it was very good right now it's 49 which is not unbearable all I have on is a um, sweatshirt type thing so 50 degrees is is alright I'm not suffering at 50 so the problem is because of my insomnia and getting up in the night a couple of times now it's almost 10 o'clock and I'm just getting up. Not so good. I'm off to a late start today. Shadows are long. I took Chris into a different town looking for work today. Uh, and then I had lunch. So it's 3.30 in the afternoon. Actually I've been here for about an hour. I took some green paint and I don't know if you can see that. I started marking maple trees with green spray paint. I have been wanting to do this for a while before the leaves fall off the trees and I can't identify them anymore. But I've marked about 10 or 12 nice sized maples for um, springtime for making sugar. So I can tap these trees, I'll be able to identify them and tap them for maple sugar. And I've been very lucky that there are, there's another one right here, right next to my burning pit. There are maple trees right around my camp. So I don't have to go very far at all. Actually, funny thing, here's where I tap, here's where I boil the syrup. Not very far to go. I'm um, cleaning up a little bit today. I'm going to have a little bonfire and burn some garbage. The wind has ripped the tarp off of the chicken coop, which I knew it would. And I'm letting the birds out. I don't know why they're shy. Come here. Hey, come here, Big Red. Come on. They're a little bit shy because they're free. But I'm going to let them out a little bit because there's not as many hawks right now. And uh, just let them get some, stretch their wings, stretch their legs a little bit. But anyway, well that one's starting to almost, I don't know if that's a hen for sure now or not. Because nobody's laying eggs, but that was supposed to be a hen. 100%. I know I have one girl, is a little spotted one. And then a little baby, tiny, tiny Bantam rooster is a dominant male. Well, anyway, they've got some freedom for a while. I just got this book. I uh, don't generally market and promote other things, but uh, I do like to review things. I was watching Doomsday Castle and they talked to this guy that had this secret survival garden and when they were walking through his garden it looked like a wild bit of forest and you can see here in the image it's just wild forest is what it looks like and he believes in planting once and harvesting for 30 years without work without maintenance or care for the most part and it's a stealth garden which means that when people come looking for a garden or food to pillage they're looking for straight neat rows in a field, a plowed field. 
and he believes in a stealth garden that looks like wild forest. So, uh, this the reviews were good. I looked up the reviews on his book, and he talks about everything. Well, starting from the front, he talks about looking for a location, um, different types of plants, breaking ground, preparing it, and all the way through to harvest, and it looks like even putting away your foods. So, seems like a good book. It's not very thick, but for the reviews, it's very simple. Uh, a lot of photos, which added the cost a little bit. It was twenty dollars, but I um, think it's a very good book from what I've been studying. And I'm going to read this and probably get back to to you guys on it one day. But anybody who's a prepper, survivalist, uh, I think just a good book. There's a baby saying hi. She's like, "Oh, the camera's on." And the baby cat. Well, I just got this package in the mail. It looks like a direct order off eBay. So let's see what we have here. Ooh. And it looks like a. I think it's a bed sheet set. Yeah, there's your pillowcase. Nice and warm looking. There's a pillowcase. And there's is that the fitted sheet? There's a fitted sheet. Very nice. This is warm. So the stuff I'm using is for summer. The stuff I have been using is very cold. Um I got an email. I'll have to look up and see who this is from. I don't remember off the top of my head. But I will put the information on the bottom here. But she saw this on uh, eBay and said it looked like a good deal. So she sent it to me. So thank you. Uh, let's see what we have here. It's the rest of the set. It came in two packs. Alright, there we have it. So that's the, the sheet. Well, I'm going to put that on the bed tonight. Seriously, that's going to help a lot. That's softer material, which makes it warmer. So we have, this is flannel for the cool winter evenings. The cozy softness pure cotton flannel sheets. Yes. 100% cotton. Well, definitely this is going to make my nights warmer because uh, it is cold laying on that um, those summer sheets. Birds went back into their home, uh, 5 o'clock, sun is going to set soon, so I closed them in for the night. They were uh, happily free ranging all day, so there was not a hawk in the sky, so I let them run around. Um, spent the whole afternoon cleaning up. This is just uh, old wood and junk and waste and stuff that I've found laying around that I never... Uh, got around to disposing of newspapers and magazines and catalogs and all kinds of junk so finally I'm cleaning up a little bit here and that's pretty much it um, I spent a lot of time just running around picking up junk and tossing into the fire and um, over here I do have something I was out in my outdoor shopping mall out in the forest and I found a bunch of junk out here. I've got a, uh, well this nozzle I had, I found some copper tubing and my idea is to take some copper tubing and run around the exhaust pipe of the wood stove, figure a way to rig this valve onto the copper tubing have this drip into this old oil can which will be upside down which will drip onto the fire um, I'm hoping that this is hopefully solid steel but um, anyway I'm thinking if I can get that to drip the funnel part of this to drip onto the fire uh, using the valve as a regulator I can use waste oil to um, burn in my wood stove 
and extend my burn over the night and it'd be almost as simple as just turning a valve like turning a thermostat to get a regulated temperature inside my my RV at night and that sure would be a dream it would be awesome if I can have a controlled temperature with the dial so it might require a trip into the shop because although this set is a threaded end it doesn't fit with this threaded end well, they're two different sizes so I might either need an adapter the optimum would be to find an adapter and coil this around the pipe onto that and um, have this other end of this, the open end of this, drip into here over the fire. But I still have to find a container and figure a way to mount another end of this onto the container of oil. So that's still in a drawing board. I'm installing some Mr. Beam's lights in the porch area. Um, there's my living room and I've set up the Mr. Beam's lights to light up the porch so when I'm out here and I enter the porch it lights up automatically for me which will light up my doorway and my entry so I can get in and out safely I've got another one sitting here which I'm going to put up over by the wood stove in a minute and that way when I'm working in the middle of the night I don't have to stumble around and worry about flashlights there's my second Mr. Beams light up above the stove so now I can come out here in the middle of the night and feed my fire. That's very nice. Now I hope this isn't going to bother me when the cat runs back and forth on the bed. Um, I might have to put a shield up on here to block the uh, angle to inside the bedroom because these are really sensitive but I'm going to find that out in a few minutes here when I go inside so anytime I walk out on the porch now I've got light I like it uh, automatic light here and uh, as I said I can see my door and then I can walk over to the wood shed or the stove shed there the light went off and boom automatic light so it's very convenient now I just tried I just popped in some coal I forgot I had it because I had it for my pot bellied stove but I just put some coal in here now I've got the damper closed but not tight and I had to open up the airflow a bit because I wasn't getting enough heat. Um, I had to put a piece of wood on top of the coal. I, I, I wasn't getting it ignited. So I'm going to let this sit a while and see what happens. But I've got a little bit of a gap here for airflow. And again the damper isn't fully closed because I was not getting enough heat inside. It's about 64 which isn't bad, but I can do better. So I'm just really being careful with this barrel stove to make sure I don't burn the place down. I want to show you another thing I've done. I have another Mr. Beams light when I come into the RV or right there in the doorway, um, right on this stairwell. Um, I didn't mount it yet, I just put it there so that it lights up the stairway. I've got my stairway is a fridge right now, by the way. Um, it's, it's perfect. But anyway, um, now I've got that entry light and when I finish putting the carpeting down, then I'll put that. See, and I've got automatic light when I enter the RV, so that works very well. Um, I just removed the window screen from the window here, and it does make a massive amount of difference in the amount of air coming in. So I can really feel it now. The screen was blocking a lot of airflow. I just don't like the idea because my cat could actually walk out on this foam which is just pressed in place and fall out of the RV. So I'm not really satisfied with this idea. Uh, I might end up actually needing a ledge, a wooden shelf here and, and sealing that off um, for her safety because she might just walk right straight through there. And she could push that fan out and fall right out into the woodshed. and. From there, she could get outside in the middle of the night. And that would not be good. So, I don't know. I'm not too excited about that, but it is blowing more heat straight into the RV like that. Well, it's 11.30 at night, 65 in and 30 out. Uh, not bad. The only problem is the humidity is really low, and I had a bloody nose this morning. From, uh, when I got up, the... A uh, fan is blowing right over my bed, so I really had problems. I had a really bloody nose this morning. 
So I'm going to have to put um, some water on top of the wood stove to put moisture into the RV. But at least I got heat. Actually, it's feeling sort of cool. I got to go stoke the fire before bed. I'm going to go out and you'll see. Oops, I locked it over already. There's my light kick on. So I have light in here. And when I walk over to the stove, another light. Well, it's warm in here though. Oh, the stove room is warm. Let's see what we got. This is. Oh, the wood is burning really slow. I was hoping to be able to get another board in there. Well, I don't know if you got a good look in there. It's pretty. Let's see if I can get this last piece in for the night. That'll be my overnighter. Good morning, everybody. This is Troy from the Do It Yourself World and the Off Grid Project. I have a special request this morning. I would like to wish happy birthday to the new legend, Chuck Sloan. Happy birthday to you. This is a shout out to you in front of the whole world. I wish you an awesome day today. And I uh, hope you enjoy your cake. Happy birthday. I'll put your YouTube name on the bottom here. It's uh, the JRRP2009.